Hi, I'm Mark Walker. I'm the Editorial Director at the Fintech Times and we're here at Seamless Middle East in Dubai for Seamless TV. I'm going to ask you if you could, first of all, introduce yourself to our audience. Sure. Pleasure to meet you, Mark. Thank you. My name is Marwan Nader. I am a director at PayMax. It's a global payment provider based in Singapore and serving the emerging markets, basically. Excellent. Thank you much. So, um, you gave us a little bit of an, un uh, an intro there to what PayMax does. Maybe just to elaborate a little bit more on that. So, what, what's the key sort of products and services that you're sure, offering? Sure. So, PayMax, as I mentioned, is a global payment solution provider. So, we focus mainly on emerging markets, mainly APAC, recently in MENA, and also we're, we're aiming to, to get Africa as well soon, and Latin America. So, we're focusing on these areas of the world. We provide payment solutions for merchants, mainly pay in, so acceptance. So let's say you have an app, you have a website, and you want users to be able to pay you money, either through cards, through wallets, through cash, or any alternative payment method that's uh, out there, depending on the region. Uh, we, we, we try to uh, you know, offer all of these payment methods. We have more than 530 available payment methods worldwide, more than 70 currencies in multiple countries around the world. So this is the main uh, first, let's say, pillar of our business. And we also provide payout solutions. So if you are a merchant and have, let's, uh, let's say, a disbursement requirement or payout to, for example, if you want to pay your suppliers, if you want to pay your employee, or if you're a social media, for example, uh, uh, platform, you want to pay your influencers, you can use our single integration API to disperse these payments. So basically, all your payment needs in, out, and as well as fund management cross-border. So you can, let's say, if you're in UAE, or Egypt, or Turkey, or KSA, you can collect locally, and then we will do the disbursement to you back to uh, uh, you know, your preferred uh, headquarter or entity, uh, wherever you are in the world. Okay, that's fun. So I guess given uh, your, your experience in various different countries within Asia and here, you're probably quite well placed to, to think about what payment trends are slightly different here in, in the yeah, GCC absolutely. compared to Asia. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, so each country in the world, depending on the maturity of the infrastructure and the historical kind of evolution of payments in these countries, you see different predominant payment methods in each area. For example, MENA, especially the GCC, is very high in card adoption. So it's a bit similar to Europe and North America. You see debit cards, credit cards everywhere. It comes you know, without thinking. Let, if you go to other areas, let's say Southeast Asia or even Africa, you see digital wallets are more prevailing than cards. Even within MENA, if you look at countries like Egypt, or Iraq, uh, be because of the population, because of the infrastructure availability, cards penetration are it's very low compared to UAE or KSA, whereas digital wallets is the go-to uh, payment method because banking uh, penetration, a lot of population don't have bank accounts or are, are maybe underserved or underbanked. So they use their digital wallets as a main uh, tool for making the payments, even cash in some countries is, is the preferred, still the preferred uh, method. So we also partner with cash providers uh, to, to provide either pay in or pay out in cash. So we adapt to the different regional kind of preferences, but it's, it's stunning that you know, each country, even within uh, the same region, might have a very different customer behavior and, and customer averseness towards trying new digital methods or not. Mm -hmm. Even for example, BNPL, so you've seen here in the MENA, Tabi and Tamara are, you know, the two biggest unicorns in, in MENA in BNPL. In other regions, it's still less known. So you need to adapt and basically go and make partnerships and connect with these payment methods to basically provide a suite of multiple options to the customers and to our merchants, basically. Yeah, and I think, as you say, it's, it's never a, a one-size-fits-all sort exactly. of solution. And I guess with, with what you're offering, you're able to quickly and easily adapt that to the, the different market that you're working in. 100%, 100%. And the, the beauty of uh, our, our solutioning is a single integration. So you don't need, let's say you're a global merchant uh, and you are interested in the MENA region. Instead of coming and let's say go to each country and do your own negotiation and your own integration point to point with each payment methods, instead you can come to PayMax. Can you can have one dashboard, one integration, and you, we will extend to you all our channels. That's the beauty of it. So we will simplify 
your settlements. We will simplify your data analytics. We will simplify your, your, your relationship management as well. So you have, you know, one point of contact for all your payment needs, right? Okay. So that's the beauty of it. And thinking about sort of the future trends of payments, obviously we've talked quite a bit about, you know, digital wallets and this sort of thing. How do you see things like bank to bank payments or you know, central bank digital currencies, how are they going to come into play and, and how will you adapt? Definitely. I mean, uh, CBDC is one of the of the hot topics. Even crypto payments, as you mentioned, are on the on the rise. Now, depending on the regulation, some jurisdictions in the world are more lenient toward accepting stable coins. In my personal view, I see that it will have uh, its its share in the market, uh, as long as you manage uh, the, the privacy, right? And you manage the interoperability between the different central banks and, and rails in each country. Uh, but the immediate trends would be, I think for me, uh, uh, more digitally, less cash, more digital payments. Again, it could be cards, it could be digital uh, wallets, could be something, a different technology like open banking or other payment methods. So definitely, uh, uh, digital payments will still be on the rise. Even if you look at the, at the, at the, at the GCC, despite the increase in e-commerce payments, around 75 to 80% of the payment is still offline, right, on the post. So there's a lot of room basically to get more into digital payments and get the new technology with the help of AI as well. Uh, and you also framework like open finance that will help uh, companies share more data freely and securely so that the fintechs can adapt and provide new hyper-personalized experiences, not only in payments, could be also in insurance, in lending, uh, in savings and investments. So I see this embedded finance kind of ecosystem growing, growing with the technology and the blockchain, uh, definitely uh, and CBDCs coming into play in the coming years. Fantastic. And final question. Um, I we're obviously here at Seamless uh, in Dubai. Um, outside of obviously your particular company, which has obviously been doing fantastic things during the event, have you seen anything else interesting or something that you uh, came across uh, that was interesting? So, honestly, what's what's fascinating about Seamless and about the Dubai in general is the amount of interest that you see from global players. So, if you have a walk outside and and, and you look at the at the at the booths, uh, there's so many uh, European. Uh, North American, Asian companies interested in coming and serving uh, the MENA region. I believe that you know UAE and KSA and and multiple regions in the country are uh, are trying to be proactive in terms of regulation, in terms of new technologies, in terms of you know giving uh, a regulatory support in, in certain type of sandboxes to help the fintechs uh, innovate and test right in in a safe environment. I think this region. Uh, will be the next growth engine or one of the leading levers for the growth engine uh, globally, uh, given you know the young population, which is very digital savvy, uh, high internet penetration, high mobile penetration, relatively high purchasing power as well for, for the population. So I think MENA going forward uh, will be a hub for, for multiple you know, new technologies, be it the AI, be it digital assets, virtual assets, and of course payments. And the, the, the location of Dubai specifically uh, at, as, at the cross point between East and West will also help it uh, be a hub in these technologies uh, going forward. Fantastic. Thank you very much for joining me here on Seamless TV, powered by the Fintech Times. Thank you so much.